you have the gospel message, you belong here. And we are so glad um, to be that you're part of our family tonight. Um, tonight, I'm going to be speaking on um, the wonder of his table. Yeah, we just put the table up here. <laughs> and I'm going to be speaking about the wonder of his table. Um, when I was a child, I think I told you that I don't come from a woman. I come from a line of preacher's wives, but I don't come from a line of good cooks. Can I say that? <laughs> I can because she has made it very clear that um, cooking is not her ministry. And so that was her line, you know. <laughs> Pam got a cake from me this week and she might agree. <laughs> cooking is not my ministry. <laughs> and so, um, uh, but uh, that kind of runs in the family, you know. And my, my grandmother wasn't really that good of a cook either. There was a few things she did well, and roast, Sunday roast was one of them. But, um, but she was not like a real good um, cook. And, but you know what? As a child, I remember what I remember about my grandmother. And my grandmother liked a little, we called her Nana. And until she was about 70, she wore high heels. And um, almost every day. And she liked, she just had a life for a little bit of length. And um, she knew how to set the table. You know, I don't, you know, when company came over, you know, she might have been cooking the same thing that she cooked all the time, most. But um, the table looked nice, you know. One of these occasions, I got to help her, well, more than one, I got to help her set the table. And um, tonight, these are her cups, you know, don't they look kind of, I don't know, what do you say, 60-ish, 50-ish, you know? And, um, and I remember her always having these on the table. She loved them because, you know, well, who wouldn't love that? They're purple. And, um, and she loved them, and she would have me set the table, you know. And uh, one time she set the table, and, you know, I asked her what she was having, and she said, well, she said, why do I have a rabbit tonight? <laughs> well, I've never heard of anybody eating rabbit, you know, and that wasn't the norm for my grandmother because she normally ate roast. That's all I really ever remember in goulash, and that was about it, you know. And um, and she said, we're having rabbit. And you know what, my heart sank, you know. I mean, number one, I didn't really want to try rabbit. But number two, my mom and dad had just given her our bunnies not too long ago. <laughs> and all I could think was those bunnies weren't outside when I looked last. And I just thought they had died. But then when she told me that we were having rabbit, I was like, sure, she cooked my bunnies. <laughs> and um, I was just so upset, but you know, I was kind of a quiet, I wasn't necessarily I would say it was extremely quiet, but it was sometimes hard for me to speak up to adults. And afterwards, she knew that I was kind of upset, and she goes, well, what's wrong, Robin? You know? And I don't know, my mom was out of town, I don't remember her being there, I remember company being there, and um, she said, well, what's wrong? And I said, Nana, did you cook my bodies? <laughs> and she was just horrified that I thought that she picked my buddy, you know? The bunnies, I'm glad to say, died of natural causes. And the rabbit was just wild rabbit. And so, but she could set a table. And tonight I want to talk about the wonder of his table. Um, she loved to set a nice table. But tonight I want to talk about his table. And we have the ability, we have the opportunity to go to the table on a daily basis. Um, you know, I love eating. I don't really care to eat alone. I like to eat with other people. And as a family, I try to make sure our family, I'm not a cook, but believe it or not, I cook dinner almost every night. And um, I try to make sure that our family <coughs> sits together. We sit down, we sit together. And I don't do this for my health, and I don't certainly don't cook, do it because I can cook. I do it because I want to hear what my boys, my little girl, my husband have to say today. And 
And this is a, a table can be a place where you have conversation. And this is where the Lord wants to take us daily. He wants us to have He wants us to have conversation with us. He wants us to have communion. And I'm not talking about communion as far as you know the little crackers and the grape juice. But I'm talking about he wants to have this relationship with us. And we talk about Jesus having a personal relationship with us. But sometimes we don't talk about how to have a personal relationship with Jesus. And how to start conversations with the Lord. Communion, the definition is sharing exchange of intimate thoughts and feelings, especially when exchange is mental or spiritual. That we sit and have communion with the Lord. You see, the Lord has declared himself, he has declared himself the daily bread. He is the bread of life. In John 6, he declared himself the bread of life. And we have this chance to have daily communion with the Lord. And we do so by prayer and reading the word and all the normal things that are not so normal. They are not, or we think things like that as Christians are just ordinary. But let me tell you, that's where the extraordinary begins. It's right here at the table with communion with our Lord and Savior. And He desires to meet us here. That's the wonder of His table. That's a wonder, right? We were but sinners when Christ died for us. And that He wants to have and desires to have a relationship <laughs> with us. He desires to commune with us. John 6, Jesus declares himself as the bread of life. And he says, if you eat of me, you will never go hungry. That there is a satisfaction. We've been talking about humanity's longing. And there is a satisfaction when you receive a daily bread that is custom made for you. You ever read the word? And you've been reading, and then all of a sudden you get this aha, you know, like the the words just pop out at you, and you know that the Holy Spirit has just spoken something to you. Maybe it even came when the Holy Spirit revealed to you that something's going to happen, or this is going to be, or it became a promise that you laid hold of those scripture verses and you believed and you began to stand on those scripture verses and declare them every day. Well, that's what the Holy Spirit wants to do. He, wants, he is setting the table for us and He wants us to have communion with Him. He is our daily bread. And look, in the Lord's Prayer, it says, Give us this day our daily bread bread, our daily bread. He is the bread. Um, when Jesus declared that he, in John 6, when he declares that he is the bread of life, I can tell you that most of the Jewish people dropped their mouth when he said that. Because they knew exactly what daily bread is and what Jesus was declaring himself to be. Because in the tabernacle, there said a um, a table, and on it was what the, the King James Version calls showbread. You ever heard of that? Showbread. And on it said the showbread. And this was something that the priest, the Levites, would attended to. And that was there all the time. And so when Jesus declared himself the bread of life, he, he declared himself the presence of God. <coughs> the manifested presence of, of God to them, and they knew exactly what that means. In fact, showbread actually means, and I think the NIV calls it, the bread of his presence, or the bread of his face, because in Hebrew, most words had come, were associated with the part of your body. So sin, is, sin to the Hebrew would have been your back, would have had that kind of thing. But the presence is your face. That means God wants to have face to face. God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to be face to face with us. And he desires, through the Holy Spirit, to have face to face communication with us. The Lord's table, the wonder of it is so special because you can never grow hungry. 
there's a thing that you never grow hungry and you never thirst again. That he satisfies and quenches us. This is vastly different than the table of the world. The table of the world just fills you up on small things. You know, it's just small things. We can get filled up on small things or get distracted here or there. And even pleasures of the world can, can sometimes distract us from what the Lord's table has for us. Can I encourage you all, and really tonight, I just want to make you a little hungry. That's all I want. I just want to make you a little hungry. I want to make you a little hungry for the Holy Spirit. I want to make you a little hungry to spend time with the Lord and spend time with His presence. The work is done here first, and then it's done there. It's here we get directions. The, the Jesus said that the Holy Spirit would guide us in all truth. But we got to have relationship with the Holy Spirit. we got to meet with Him so that we know, especially in these last days, what truth is. Sean Piper said, if you don't feel a strong desire for the manifestation or the glory of God, it is not because you have drunk and been fully satisfied. It's because you have nibbled so long on the table of the world, your soul is stuffed with small things, and there is no more room for the great. So we can get so stuffed up with just the little things. Just a little, and it's not that the Lord doesn't want us to have pleasures, and he, he doesn't want us to. We have routines, and we have jobs to do, and we got things to do. He just wants us to take a little time to sit down with him at the table. He wants us to make a little space for our war room. He wants to make a, us to make a prayer closet to be with him. And we can make a prayer closet anywhere. It doesn't actually have to be a closet. It can be your car. It can be your shower. He doesn't care. He just wants us to take time to spend with him. Yeah. When I was in um, high school, I loved choir. Yeah, I know. I don't sing. I'm here. And, um, but I just loved choir. It was my favorite class. And by my senior year, I was taking two or three classes of it, you know, because I just had electives. You know, I had all my credits and everything. And, um, you know, but I, my choir teacher, I'd had her since I was sixth grade. I had her all the way from sixth grade to through twelfth grade, and I had choir every semester, all, all those years. And she was my vocal teacher and everything. And she would say to me, Ronnie, you have a really, really nice blending voice. Mm -hmm. And that was another way of saying, Ronnie, you're not doing any solos. <laughs> If you have a really, really nice living voice. In fact, when it was time for the musical, The Wizard of Oz, she said, Ryan, I got a perfect part for you. You can get a solo, but you got to be Glinda, the Good Witch of the North. <laughs> she thought my voice was perfect for that. <laughs> and, um, and she was just, uh, she, never, she never gave me a solo. You know, I would sing the na national anthem, and I would be singing harmony. For, with someone else that was singing the melody, and you know that's just the way it went. Well, one day, to the surprise of me, she said, "Ryan, I'm going to have you do a solo." Well, I didn't even know there was a solo in the song, and it was the song that we were taking to competition, and we've already practiced it hundreds of times. And um, I thought, my goodness, she wants me to do a solo. Man, I don't even know if I want to do a solo. It just happened to be—I went to a, a public school, but it happened to be a sacred song. And it happened to be the whole chapter of Psalms 23. And um, she said, I want you to sing this line right here. And she points at the music. And she says, I want you to sing. He prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. He anoints my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Psalms 23, 5 says, He prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. He anoints my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Now, I taught Jace, no, not Jace, Justice and Ella, Psalms 23. It has been one of my, I don't know, what can you say, a life song. I mean, that song changed my life as a, in high school. That public school changed my life. And um, and when I taught him, I taught him 
to remember it like this. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He anoints my head with oil, my cup running over. And it was that line that I got my first solo as a senior in high school for the choir. For the choir. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Who are your enemies? Well, that's a good question. Who are your enemies? Um, maybe um, we think of enemies as a boss or, or somebody we don't get along with at work, or we think of enemies being that loud neighbor, or whatever, whoever your enemy is. I can tell you that those aren't your enemies. Your enemies, you don't fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities. And our enemies, some of our enemies might be stress. That might be one of our enemies. Or um, anxiety, you know, that might be an enemy. That might be an enemy of our soul. It might be fear. That might be an enemy. Um, it might be rejection. That might be an enemy. It might be poverty. That might be an enemy of your soul. It could be insecurity. That might be, that's a real enemy. That's something that Satan likes to attack us with. That might be an enemy going over there. It may be an illness. You know, for Pam, I almost wrote out cancer. Or a backache, that might be your enemy. He prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemy. He prepares a table for us. He prepared this table for us, the same table that we have communion with him, the same table that we partake of our daily bread. He has prepared a table before us in the presence of our enemies. And you know what? All these enemies have to watch as the Lord sets a table for us. They have to watch. We are victorious. At this table, we are victorious. Yes. We are already overcomers. All those things that try to bother you, they're just enemies. They have to watch. And they have to bow down to the eternal victory that we have in Christ Jesus, our Lord. He makes us victorious. You know, we may think just because we have enemies that the Satan's got us. Just because we have fear that Satan's got us. Just because we have insecurities or anxiety or whatever Satan has attacked you with. That's not true. You say, well, Ron, and I don't have victory over those things. He's preparing a table. He's preparing a table. You just wait. It's in the Word. You will be victorious because you know what? Who makes it to heaven? The overcomers. That's what Revelation says. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the Word of our testimony. We are overcomers in Christ Jesus. He prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies. And he anoints our head with oil. Now Psalms 23, it was written by King, King David. And so when we think of this psalm, we think well, he was a shepherd and he knew what the shepherd was. But what he's really doing throughout this psalm is he is, is an analogy between the shepherd and the <coughs> good shepherd, our Father in heaven. And he is saying that God anoints our head with oil. And so sometimes we have a tendency to say, well, God anointed your head with oil, King David. You were a king. But the truth is that he anoints all of our heads. We are all his sheep. And he anoints all of our heads with oil. And you know, a shepherd, when the sheep would come in, he would check out all of those little sheep. And he would make, if any of them had any any burrs or anything or any festers or any of infection, they got out this balm, this oil, and they would anoint it. And they would 
they were just notorious for getting things in their eyes, especially. And, and they would anoint it with oil. He is our healing. It's at his table that we get anointed with oil, and he brings healing balm to us. This is his table that we get filled up, where we learn to practice the presence of the Lord in our lives. He anointed our head with oil. His healing balm is on us, and my cup overflows. My cup overflows. Man, the Lord is extravagant in His love. He is extravagant in His love. Now, I'm not one that really likes extravagance. I don't necessarily, but you know what? My husband loves extravagance. And he has at times poured out his extravagance on me. And I have to say to him, every time Christmas comes around,
the love of Jesus Christ. You can't climb high enough, get low enough, you can't sneak around, you can't sneak out, you can't behave badly enough that it would take his love for you. For God so loved the world. It didn't say that God loved the Christians. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And it is an extravagance of his love that he just gushes it out on us. And man, who wouldn't want to be at the table? Revelation de declares that there is a table in heaven. It is a table set for us. And he goes there to prepare it for us. And he wants us to be in heaven where he is. And he loves us so much. And that he cares for us so much. Friend, get at the table. Get at the table. Get there with him. Make room for him. The Holy Spirit wants to talk to you. You say the Holy Spirit doesn't want to talk to me. I say you cannot. You cannot. The Lord's table. You cannot separate the Lord from the Holy Spirit. They are one. And the Holy Spirit wants to commune with you. I don't know why he wants to commune with us. He could come home with a loud voice if he wanted to. He wants to commune with us because he wants to use us. You say, well, brother, I don't have dreams and visions and all those kind of things. He still wants to talk to you. There's ways that he wants to talk to you. Maybe you don't see things, or you don't have dreams, or you don't have vision, and maybe you have feelings, and you feel the presence of the Lord, and you know when his peace is manifested. Or maybe you just know, you just sometimes just have aha moments, or, or, or the word pops out off of a page at you, and you know that he's speaking to you and directing you. The Holy Spirit will guide you. He gives us a daily portion. The Lord's prayer for us is that we would receive the daily bread that he has for us. He gives us a portion. And you know what? That portion is custom made for us. Man, I have been reading, you know, Bible plants. And I'm like, well, I don't know what this has for me today. You know, it's just a Bible study that I read that morning. And lo and behold, it'll come up. Not too um, long ago, when we were going through the season of transition, we knew that the Lord was pulling us away from the last place that we were at. I, I was like, you know, okay, where's this place at? And I could feel it, but I didn't know what was going on. Well, I went to work, and I um, was at the Dirt Macy's, and um, a lady happened to be there, and I had worked with her a few uh, months before, but she had got a promotion, and she was actually a head manager at an, another Macy's store. And it's how big her promotion was. I mean, it was huge. And she came in and, and, you know, just talk about the overflow of your daily bread and how it overflows. It just, it just spills out. You get satisfied here and you get into the presence here in this place in communion with the Lord it starts to overflow, and that's what happened to this lady today. You see, you thought I was going to tell my story about myself, but I'm not. I'm going to tell a story about my coworker. She had got a promotion, and I said, Hey, lady, I heard you got a promotion. She, she, she said, I did. I did. And she was a very professional woman, dressed to the T in her pantsuit. Beautiful. And um, she said, I got a promotion. I said, Well, that's great. That's awesome. So how did that go down? Please tell me. And she goes, well, you know. She goes, well, you know. And I'm like, well, no, I don't know. You're going to tell me? She goes, well, you know. It was just the Lord. And I'm like, what? She just, you know, I mean, you know, we hadn't really talked about the Lord before, you know. And she said, what is the Lord? And I said, well, well tell me how that happened. And I said, I believe in the Lord. You know, she doesn't know my husband. And I said, I said, I believe in the Lord. And she starts to share with me out of the overflow of her heart, the goodness of God to me. And, and you know, she was just sharing. And all of a sudden, it just switched just like that. And she started to prophesy to me. She started to prophesy right there in the offices of Macy's. She started to prophesy. And she said, you know what, Brandon? 
She goes, I feel like the Lord's saying that he's calling you to sit at a table. And she goes, you won't believe what this table looks like or who's sitting there with you. That he's calling you to a new place. And she started to cry. 